Joining me is Ian Freeman. He is host of Free Talk Live, also a blogger at freekeen.com. Ian, this is so funny. I started getting a bunch of people sending me links to this uh, parking meter Robin Hood lawsuit. And then I realized, oh, it's Ian. I know him. We, we should really talk about this. So this is, um, you know, you and I politically, we have very divergent views, but I think we both find this, this situation equally compelling for probably similar reasons. Talk to us first about your involvement with this Robin Hood parking meter group, what the group does, et cetera. Sure. I moved to New Hampshire from Florida back in 2006 as an early mover for the Free State Project, which is a, a group of 20,000 radical libertarian types, uh, anarchists, voluntarists, people that love the ideas of liberty. They're all moving to the same place in order to get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. So um, it was in 2009 when an early mover for the Free State Project named Lauren Canario, who has a really great history of some heroic civil disobedience, uh, she created Robin Hooding. She went out into the streets and started saving people from getting parking tickets uh, being issued by the parking enforcement officers. And it was something that really inspired people. Uh, other activists who'd moved up here kind of took the mantle over the years. And throughout the last several years, it has basically been something people have done over time. You know, whenever they get a chance, they go out and do it, maybe an hour here and there, whatever. So but the idea the is you just take a bunch of change, you walk around, you see parking meters that are expired or are about to expire, you throw a coin in there, prevent somebody from getting a 10 or $15 ticket. That's almost accurate. Um, it's not entirely what we do here. There's a little extra that's, that makes Keen, I think, a little bit special because people have been doing that for years. You, know, right. you get out of your car, somebody's got an expired meter, you help them out. That's not a new idea. But what's happening here is the Robin Hooders, as they're called, are actually targeting the parking enforcement officers, finding them, going in, and walking in front of them. Uh, so therefore, the officers, it's not possible for them to write a ticket. Uh, so we're literally saving people from being ticketed. It, you know, if we were to just go to a lot and there was no parking enforcer there and just put money in people's meters, maybe that would save somebody if the enforcer happened to show up a little bit <laughs> later on. But when we were walking directly in front of the enforcer, you know, 10 feet in front of them or whatever, then we know for a fact that every meter that we put uh, money into that's been expired is a meter that would have received a ticket and did not. And that's how we can count and say for sure that we've saved over 4,000 motorists so far this year from being ticketed. But what I was going to say about the rest of the kind of the history was back in January, uh, this really kicked into high gear in a way that it never has before. And we've got people out on the streets every single day, uh, basically saving people. I don't think we're out every hour that the parking enforcers are, but some days it's darn close. So before we kind of talk about the lawsuit and everything else that's going on, the the idea of this is what basically politically the idea is you believe that the fee you want to limit the amount that keen ha collects from people just uh, having expired meters because you want smaller government is that kind of the 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 stepping the the path well I think that um, less coercion in people's lives is really important to me. Uh, I don't support uh, murder. I don't support putting peaceful people in cages. And I don't support stealing a single mom's car because she's be uh, behind on uh, parking tickets, which we've encountered that situation I think, more than once in the streets, You know, someone getting their car stolen. And in one case, it was a single mom who obviously was having a tough time financially. And that certainly doesn't help when you take someone's car away from them. So I think that the government's methods of doing this parking enforcement are, uh, are ridiculous and aggressive and completely unnecessary. And there's plenty of towns in New England, in Keene, New Hampshire, plenty of towns in New England that don't have parking enforcement. They don't have parking meters. And everything's okay. In fact, Keene actually shuts down its parking meters for a whole week during the Christmas season. Mm. Uh, and their claim about parking meters is that, oh, well, we need it to keep turnover downtown. Well, if that were true, why do they shut them down for a whole week during the Christmas season? I mean, wouldn't that be the, the busiest time? Wouldn't that be the time when you would need to have the most parking enforcement if you're going by what, uh, what they're claiming? So, so this is, you know, just, just to kind of to tell my audience, 
I want to talk to you about this. The, I actually disagree with Ian here. So the, I disagree with the idea that the parking meters and the fines are coercive in the sense that you're not being forced to have a vehicle. You're not being forced to park it there. And this is kind of a fundamental disagreement I have with, with some aspects of libertarian philosophy. But we, rec we can agree to disagree on that because I'm still interested in this story, which now actually has a lawsuit going on where New Hampshire is actually suing the, Rob the, the, the Robin Hood parking meter group. The city of Keene, uh, the group of people calling themselves the city of Keene, is suing me and five other folks, including James Cleveland, who is commonly known as Robin Hood. Uh, <laughs> we are being sued in civil court, and that's because in the lawsuit, the city actually admits, if you read the d details in the suit, they admit there's nothing within the current law that actually allows them to do anything about this. So on while in the suit, they're accusing us of, uh, they're accusing us of harassment and intimidation, ridiculous claims. If there were actual harassment going on, then they could arrest us and bring criminal charges for harassment. But so what what do you expect the uh, the outcome of the lawsuit to be? Or do you have counsel defending you? At this time, no. Um, I we've been talking with one attorney. I would like to, you know, talk to some more that might be interested in picking it up. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of money to uh, throw at an attorney, so maybe pro bono would be nice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be more than happy to see an attorney who really cares about free speech and government accountability to uh, jump on board with this, because those are really what the issues are here. Uh, we've got people in public observing so-called public servants, and the city might have a claim if they were actually a private organization and their employee employees were being interfered with. You know, if I go into you know some big box store and start making a mess or doing something to uh, distract their employees from actually serving their customers, then they would have, I think, an argument there. That's private property; it's their rules. But public employees are supposed to be accountable, at least in New Hampshire. Well, the other thing too is, if I were thinking about it, I would say. Um, does the, does the the uh, city of Keene have the same reasonable expectation of revenue from those tickets that an, that a private company would from being able to sell computers, for example? Because you really are talking about a fine for something that somebody has done wrong. So I don't really see it as saying, well, listen, we've budgeted that we're going to collect X amount and therefore we're kind of entitled to it. And anybody who reduces that stream of revenue for us is civilly liable. That's where I think the, the, uh, the empty space is in the logic. So keep in mind, uh, this is a civil suit, but it's not for damages. So the city isn't making that claim. Right. Uh, the city is making the claim that their enforcement officers are uh, sick and they're upset and they want to quit their jobs and that uh, they want to create what they call a safety zone, uh, which I would call an anti-freedom zone, a uh, 50-foot radius around the parking enforcement officers themselves. <laughs> to protect them from the actions of the Robin Hooders. And by the way, there's a YouTube channel called Freeman TV Raw, FR33MAN TV Raw, where you can go and watch hours of footage. Uh, if you're somebody who's skeptical, he's like, oh yeah, well, maybe the city's telling the truth. This guy's lying about you know, not harassing them or intimidating. But the Robin Hooders generally go out with video cameras rolling at all times because we've encountered situations where the parking enforcement officers will just tell lies. Hmm. And so we don't want to get in a situation where, you know, some parking enforcement officer just makes something up like, oh, yeah, he hit me. Right. Well, if we've got video footage that's going all the time. We can prove that's not true. And so when they're claiming we're harassing or intimidating, we literally have hours and hours of raw footage that anyone who wants to can go and look at and see for themselves. So their claims are, are absolutely ridiculous. Of course, that doesn't mean that a judge won't rule in their favor, because it's certainly been my experience that government judges uh, support the state. So I don't know what to expect out of court. All right. Well, we're going to follow it. We've been speaking with Ian Freeman, host of Free Talk Live, also a blogger at freekeen.com. Ian, great to talk to you. Hey, David, I appreciate you having me on.